Like many people these days, we're trying to save every penny, and so I'm working on a lot of budget-friendly meal plans. This week, I have $30 to spend on some groceries, and I'm really excited to see what I can make with those, so let's head over to the store and see what we can get. All right, this is my list for this week, so let's go see how much everything is gonna cost and what exactly we can get. Eggs are currently 99 cents, so we're just gonna grab one of those. Milk is either $1.91 for 1% or 2% is $2. I'm gonna go ahead and get the 2% today for $2. So chicken leg quarters are $1.09 a pound, so we're gonna grab some of those. This one looks really good at four pounds. We're gonna pay $4.39 for this one. The Mexican shredded cheese is $2.89 for 12 ounces, so this is what we're going to be getting today for this. And this week we're getting a container of hummus for $2.49. We'll just get the classic hummus today, but you can definitely get roasted garlic or roasted red pepper. Those will add extra flavor too to all your dishes. We're just gonna get classic today. Let's get one can of garbanzo beans for 82 cents. Then one can of black beans for 82 cents. And one can of chili beans for 78 cents. Also, I do want to mention on another menu down the line, I will be using some canned pinto beans because it's such a good price here, 30 ounces for $1.59. And they also have organic options too for around a dollar for black beans and kidney beans, pinto beans. So that's really nice to know. Let's get two cans of tomato sauce for 43 cents each today. And a can of diced tomatoes for 87 cents. Next is some whole kernel corn for 64 cents. We'll be grabbing one five pound bag of baking potatoes today. This is 368. However, in case you have an Aldi near you, sometimes they have these 10 pound bags of russet potatoes for $4. Obviously that would be a great deal, but uh, to keep this in mind for most shoppers, we're just gonna get five pounds today. I plan on doing some really fun things with this baguette this week. So these are $1.79, let's get one. We'll get two avocados for 49 cents each today. Limes are 29 cents, let's get one. We'll get two Roma tomatoes, they're 88 cents a pound. And the onions are 87 cents a pound, so we're just gonna get a really large onion. I'm gonna get two smaller onions for a little over a pound. And now I'm gonna get one cucumber for 59 cents and a bag of spinach for $1.28. Then let's get one bag of organic quinoa for $3.49. Then let's get one bag of baby carrots for 98 cents. But if you don't like baby carrots, you can definitely grab a two pound bag of regular carrots. Those are only $1.78 for two pounds, which makes it about 89 cents a pound. Here is everything that we're getting today. Let's go see what the total is. Our total today is $32.05. Here is everything we got today. We got a French baguette, some baby carrots, eggs, hummus, chicken, Cucumbers, limes, tomatoes, avocados, about a pound of onion, milk, Mexican style cheese, spinach, potatoes, quinoa, tomato sauce, diced tomatoes, corn, some garbanzo beans, black beans, and chili beans. So let's get cooking. The first thing that I want to do is get this chicken all cooked up so everything is ready to go for the entire week. So I'm just going to pat this dry and then I'm going to put it in a large bowl and toss it with olive oil, salt, pepper, paprika, and some garlic powder. And I'm using my hands just to help it get all mixed up, but you could definitely just toss it in the bowl or use some tongs. And I'm being really liberal here with the spices. And if you have any other spices that you really like, maybe some onion powder or anything else, you can do that as well. But if you don't have paprika or garlic powder, that's totally fine. Salt and pepper will work great for this. After it's nice and seasoned, then I'm gonna put it on a lined baking sheet with the skin side down. And I'll put that in an oven at 400 degrees and bake that for about 15 minutes then I'll flip it over and bake it for an additional 15 to 30 minutes and I'm using a meat thermometer to double check that it's 165 degrees or more then I'm gonna let it rest for about five to ten minutes before I start taking the skin off it may not be cool enough to work with yet so give yourself a few extra minutes if you need to if it's too hot save those drippings from the pan as well and put those in the refrigerator once those are cooled down the fat is gonna separate from the drippings you're gonna take the fat off and discard 
discard it and just keep those drippings in the fridge for later. We're gonna use that for lots of things. Shred the chicken and have it all portioned out. Save the bones and the skin in an airtight container and put that in the freezer as well. We're gonna use that later. This first dinner idea is one of my all-time favorites. It's chicken and quinoa bowls. First, we're gonna start by making that quinoa in a separate pot. I usually recommend about a cup of quinoa to one and three quarters cup of water and see how that goes. But the instructions on the back of the bag will let you know what exactly they recommend. So you can try that first and then add more or less water as you go. Now we're going to heat some olive oil or if you don't have olive oil, you can use just just water and we'll saute those onions till they're nice and soft and translucent and then season that with the garlic powder. Once that's all cooked through, we're going to add our chicken and just stir it up for about a minute or so, just till it's a little bit warm through. Then we're just gonna add everything else. Add the tomatoes, corn, beans, cumin, chili powder, lime juice, and then that quinoa that's already been cooked. And you're just gonna heat that until it's nice and bubbly. And seriously, that is it for this dish. It doesn't take very long at all, and that's one of the reasons why I love it. Now, I normally use fresh tomatoes for this, and you can use frozen corn if you like. So there's lots of ways that you can modify this and make it you know your own you can add any other seasonings that you like more or less quinoa so just play with it and see how you like it but definitely give this one a try it's one of my all-time favorites and i usually put a little bit of shredded cheese on top sometimes some avocado you can either use the avocado for this dish or save it for some of the other dishes coming up shortly in the week it's up to you depending on if it's ripe is probably what's going to decide for you next up is a very very easy dish it's just loaded potatoes and this one happens to be vegetarian I weighed out my four potatoes and it was three pounds exactly but I'm gonna grab four potatoes I washed scrubbed and dried them and now I'm poking holes in them with the fork but you can use a knife instead if you like whatever is easiest I'm coating them with olive oil and then putting kosher salt on top if you don't have kosher salt that's totally fine just use some regular salt not a huge deal then we're just going to put them in a preheated oven at 425 degrees it's gonna take about 60 minutes check it at 50 minutes see if they're all cooked through by piercing it with a fork if it easily goes into the potato they are ready to go take them out and in the meantime we're also just going to heat up our chili beans in a pot until they're nice and bubbly and hot and then just slice the potatoes and load them up with beans and cheese and this one's really fun to modify too you can add anything that you have some hot sauce if you have greek yogurt or sour cream on hand you can add that i love this dish because it's so flavorful and so filling and it only uses a couple ingredients so definitely put this one on your budget menu because it's definitely a keeper i mean look how delicious this was my mouth is still watering i need to make this again pretty soon because it was so good Next up is a super easy and delicious breakfast idea. I call this one the cheesy egg and potato bake, and it makes about four to six servings. First, I'm gonna peel my potatoes, but I'm saving the potato skins for later. We're gonna put those in the freezer and we're gonna keep those for later. So hang on to those. And when you use your onions too, make sure you hang on to those onion skins too. And I'm just going to dice up these potatoes in little bite-sized pieces, cover with cold water and put salt and let those boil for about 12 minutes until they're nice and cooked through. Then I'm going to whisk up my eggs with the milk and some salt and pepper garlic powder and get that all mixed together and set that aside the seasonings in the egg mixture really make this dish so don't go light on the seasonings and if there's any other seasonings that you like add them now because this is really what's going to make a lot of the flavor in this dish now we're going to put our cooked potatoes down in this casserole dish here top it with the eggs then top it with some shredded cheese and cover it with some foil and put it in the oven for about 25 to 30 minutes until the eggs are nice and cooked through and that is it for this one. Super easy, super fast. You can also wrap these individual portions in tortillas if you have any on hand or eat it as is like I did. It was delicious. This next dinner idea is really nice and light and it would be a really good lunch option as well. So that is something to think about. First, I started by cooking my quinoa and then I let it chill in the refrigerator until it was cooled completely. Then in a small mixing bowl, I added my hummus, olive oil, water, and salt and mix that together. Make sure you taste it and add more salt as needed. A lot of times we don't add as much salt in our dishes here in this household so sometimes it definitely needs a little bit more flavor for other people so make sure you taste it and now we're adding some spinach to a really large bowl it's about three large handfuls of the spinach we got i'll add my cooked quinoa 
cucumber, tomatoes, avocado, and that hummus dressing. Just give that a good mix. And that's it for this one. Now, after it's portioned out in bowls, definitely give it a taste and see if it needs a little bit more salt and pepper or anything else that you might have on hand that you want to add. Now, moving on to our next dinner idea. This is Spanish style chicken and quinoa with cheesy garlic bread. This is the part where I do something fun with that baguette. First, I'm going to start by heating some oil in a pan. If you don't have oil, again, you can just use water. I'm adding my quinoa and my onions just to toast the quinoa and cook those onions until they're nice and soft and translucent. Then I'm just going to add my chicken and saute for about a minute. After that, I'll add water, tomato sauce, chili powder, garlic powder, cumin, and give that a stir. Then I'll just bring that to a boil, cover, reduce the heat, and let that simmer for about 20 minutes or until the quinoa is fully cooked through. Then I'm just going to take it off the heat and let it rest for about five minutes. While that's simmering away, we're going to go ahead and make our cheesy garlic bread on the side. So first I'm going to start by grabbing that baguette that we got. We're going to slice that in half. I'm going to save half of it for later so I'm just going to use half for this recipe I'll slice it in half again so I have two long pieces that are cut and in a small bowl I'm going to mix together my softened butter parsley and garlic powder until it's really nicely combined then I'm going to just spread that butter mixture on top of my bread and today my daughter is helping me with this and it's super fun for the kids so if you've got your kiddos helping you in the kitchen definitely have them help with this one it's super fun after we finish spreading that butter on really well we're going to add our shredded cheese on top now I'm just going to broil this after that on a nice lined baking sheet for about five minutes until everything is nice and bubbly and melty and it's all toasted but you can also bake it if you don't have a broiler you can just bake it or you could even use the air fryer if that's what you'd like it'll work great just make sure you slice it into smaller pieces if you have to but look how delicious and this spanish style quinoa turned out really tasty but i do recommend again tasting it and adding more salt if needed or some hot sauce or anything else to just zhuzh it up a bit. Some shredded cheese on top is amazing on this one. Definitely add that too. Next, I'm gonna be doing a little bit of prep work here. I'm just gonna separate the carrots. Now, if you see the little tops on the carrots, don't waste those. We're gonna put them in the bag with our onion scraps and our potato peels. So just save that for later. So I'm just going to shred half of these and the other half I'm going to slice and just keep in the fridge for later for when I need to use these things. And I'm also going to finish dicing up this onion here and saving the skins and the tops and the root end and everything in my bag of scraps and just dice up this onion for later too because I am going to be making a homemade chicken stock with all of my scraps and the bones and the skin from the chicken. So I'm grabbing those out of the freezer because I didn't know what day I was going to use those. So grab those out of the freezer, put them in a large stock pot, add all of my veggie scraps and fill that with cold water almost all the way to the top. This is a six quart stock pot, so whatever pot you have on hand is fine. Just wanna make a ton of stock if possible. Then I'm just gonna boil that, but then reduce the heat immediately and put that on the simmer just for about two hours. I don't wanna go too long, just enough to get all the flavors out of that. Then I'm just gonna remove the big pieces before I strain it directly into my next dish, which is actually a chicken and quinoa soup. So first I'm gonna start by by adding some oil in a large stock pot and heat that up add the onions we're gonna do about half of that onion for this dish then I'll also add in those carrots that I just chopped for this one and I'm just gonna saute that until those are nice and soft and the onions are translucent and add a ton of flavor to this dish onions are super important they add lots of flavor especially to soups once that's nice and sauteed through I'm gonna add my chicken stock on top of this now make sure if you're doing this that you use a mesh strainer that is heat resistant. I don't recommend doing this if you have one that may be iffy with the plastic melting and all that. Mine was heat resistant, so just be careful. And if you're gonna strain your stock, make sure you put a pot underneath. It is the saddest day when you accidentally strain your stock directly down the drain, and we've all done it before. <laughs> so just fair warning, remember to put that pot underneath. So you can either use a large bowl or another pot to put that stock in first if you like, and then pour it on top of the veggies here in this soup. Now, now I'm just going to portion out a little bit of the chicken I'm using about three quarters of a cup to a cup of chicken here and about three quarters of a cup of quinoa as well and I'm just going to pour that directly in as well into the soup and just let that simmer for about 20 minutes or so until that quinoa is cooked through and again adding the seasonings the salt you can add pepper or bay leaves you can add anything you have on hand for this parsley would work good too just go nuts if you have lots of seasonings add whatever you like once that quinoa is cooked through go ahead and portion it and serve and enjoy 
This next recipe is an optional breakfast idea. If you still have baguette left and you wanna make a breakfast with those four eggs that you have left on hand, then just fry one up, toast that bread, add some hummus to the bread and a little bit of spinach and then add that fried egg on top. A runny yolk is a must for this one, by the way. So if it's not your cup of tea, maybe skip this breakfast and use those eggs for the end of this video. I have a bonus dinner idea using those eggs instead. But I like to add some hot sauce. You can add salt. You can add everything, bagel seasoning, whatever you want on top, whatever you have. This one is one of my all-time favorite breakfasts. You've got to give this one a try. It's so delicious. Now this next breakfast idea is a family favorite. It's called cheesy egg and fried potato bowls and they're so good first you're going to start by washing and drying your potato then we're going to peel the skin off you can save that skin as well and make more vegetable stock or broth later on if you like then i'm going to dice the potatoes here and put them in a bowl and toss them with olive oil salt pepper and paprika you can add garlic powder too but i was just feeling the salt pepper paprika combination here so it's totally up to you add whatever seasonings that you like or whatever you have on hand give that a good toss and season again with salt the salt is super important here with the potatoes we are going to be frying these today in an air fryer but you can also do the oven and that works fine as well at 400 degrees in one layer and just stir it halfway through just look at the recipe for all of the notes on that one too then i'm going to add the four eggs in a bowl with some milk and of course some seasonings again and i'll whisk that up until it's nice and combined and set that aside and then we're going to head over to the stove and heat a pan and add a little bit of oil or butter or again if you don't have oil or butter you can just use water and i'm going to saute the other half of that onion that we chopped from the other day and let that get all nice and soft and translucent then i'm going to add more seasonings just a little bit of salt and pepper after those onions are cooked through i'll add a little bit of spinach i don't want it to wilt all the way down i just want it to barely wilt and then i'm going to add my egg mixture on top and scramble those eggs just by pushing them around just on a medium heat until they're nice and cook through and after that I'm gonna check on my potatoes I have been tossing them every seven minutes or so in my air fryer just to make sure they don't burn and they get a nice even crispness on the look oh my goodness how delicious are these potatoes you've got to try these then just separate them in the bowls top with the egg mixture and of course add some cheese for that cheesiness that we're looking for and you can add a hot sauce or salsa or whatever you want but these are so delicious just like that this next dinner idea is really easy to modify and I highly recommend trying this in all kinds of different ways but today we're making some toasted chickpeas with this one so first i just drained and rinsed the can then put it in a little towel rubbed them all together until all the skins came off the chickpeas then i just picked those off and discarded those after that i added my chickpeas to a bowl and added the olive oil and my seasonings. I just did salt and pepper, dried basil, and garlic powder, but again, just salt and pepper is totally fine for this one. We're going to put it on a lined baking sheet as well and make sure it's in one even layer so that way everything is getting nice and evenly toasted in the oven and we'll stick that in the 400 degree oven for about 30 minutes and we're going to mix halfway through as well just again to make sure everything cooks nice and evenly and these are going to be really crispy chickpeas so if you don't like crispy chickpeas you can just eat them you know just heat it up if you like in a uh, you know a pan or something like that so it's totally up to you but the seasoning is super important for this one it adds a lot of flavor to this particular dish after that i'm just going to layer all the ingredients in individual bowls so first i'm going to start by just putting a small handful of spinach then some avocado a diced tomato some shredded carrots that we shredded the other day i chopped the other half of that cucumber added that as well plus some cooked quinoa those toasted chickpeas and i did go ahead and add a little bit of that shredded chicken we had a little bit left so i just added a tiny bit to this dish just to add a little bit extra protein and a little more flavor and a different texture to this then i added some hummus right in the center you can top your hummus with a little bit of olive oil if you'd like and some fresh cracked pepper and then just eat it it's so delicious and if there's anything in this you don't like you can always omit it or put something different it's totally up to you this next recipe is the bonus recipe with those eggs. It's a super easy egg drop soup. 
It's not super authentic, but it's fast, it's easy, and it's budget friendly. So I'm just gonna mix together those eggs and some seasonings in this measuring cup here. Set that aside. Then I'm going to set some water to boil in a large stock pot. And I'm gonna add some of those chicken drippings that we saved from when we made that baked chicken and some soy sauce. And again, we like to add a little bit less salt at first. So definitely add more. If you like more, you can add more soy sauce later. And then we're going to bring that to a boil and start stirring. And we're gonna continue stirring and adding our eggs at the same time. And we can't stop stirring or we won't get the nice stringy eggs. So keep stirring until all the eggs are poured in. And it's cooking as you go here. And once it's done and getting all poured in, they're already all cooked through. Take that off the heat and serve it. If you have green onions, add those on top, or you can even add some of the chopped onion if you have any of that left, and even some chicken if you have chicken on hand still. And that's pretty much it for that bonus recipe. It's really tasty and so easy. I hope you found this meal plan helpful, and I hope you enjoyed the recipes. If you made any changes, please let me know in the comments. And if you have any budget-friendly meals that you personally love, I would love to hear about them. So leave those in the comments too. I'm always looking for more ideas. And subscribe to see more if you'd like, because I will have more of these soon. And thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day.